Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Second Breakfast podcast. I'm Andy Roth alongside Phil Duvall. Say hi, Phil. Hi, everybody. And it's Monday. It's, it's Monday, right? It's, I didn't, I didn't like it's sleep for Monday. It's Monday. Yes. And on Monday, we do our weekly leftovers, which is, uh, which is where Phil and I tell you uh, one big thing that happened to us movie-wise over the past week, as well as uh, all the movies we saw over the past week, and all the movies coming out this upcoming weekend that you should be excited for. It's a public service. We are helping you. We yes. are bringing the good news of movie them to your life. And That's true. That's not, true. You know? Yeah. We, don't even, we don't even have to go door-to-door. To door. It's all online. <laughs> it's all, it's all, yeah, let's be honest. You could find this stuff out for yourself with a quick Googling. But we, we appreciate that you come to us instead. Um, and and uh, just because we like imposing arbitrary limits on ourselves, uh, the all of everything I said after the one big thing, the movies we saw over the last week and the movies we're excited for this upcoming weekend, all of that we do in five minutes. There's a timer and everything. Wow. So... Phil, how was your week? My week was great, Andy Roth. Uh, I saw an old friend named Andy Roth. I remember that. I remember yeah, that. That was pretty yes. cool. Um, I'm going to sneeze now. Okay. <coughs> it was lovely seeing you, uh, guys. If you haven't seen, if you haven't seen last Thursday's podcast entitled "Revisiting Movies," you should totally, uh, you should totally check it out uh, because we are actually in the same place. Um, I don't know if it makes since we started the podcast. And I don't know if it makes a better show or not, but it's what we did. That's true. It That's was true. fun. It was a blast. <clears throat> made me feel made me feel young again. Agreed. So yes. let me tell you what my one big thing is. Uh, I saw a trailer. I, I went and saw the movie Men Man Man of Steel. <laughs> I'm saying Men of man. Steel, I'm not really sure why. Man of sure. Steel. It's a funny thing to just call a Superman movie. And it's a really dumb title. Now that I think about it. Now I'm thinking about it. It's a dumb title. But anyways, uh, <laughs> I went and saw Man of Steel yesterday, and they had literally 20 minutes of previews beforehand. <laughs> Not like jokingly, like, oh my god, that was like 20 minutes. It was literally 20 minutes of previews. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I had that moment where I was watching at the end of the 20 minutes of previews. I was so pummeled by previews that I literally looked over to the person I was going to the movies with and said... What are we seeing right now? I, I don't. I don't remember, and I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, I ended up seeing Man of Steel, which is a dumb title. But anyways, they had a preview in the midst of all the previews, some of which were were really good. They had a preview for a movie called Turbo, which is about a racing snail. And this is why this is my. I love how angry you already are. This is why this is my point already. You have made my point. You know, I was thinking about the fact that you and I so often tout the Pixar studio films yeah. mm -hmm. and movies like Wreck-It Ralph. Yes. And I get that that could be sort of like, all right, all right, we get it. Yeah. But I got to tell y'all, like, part, part of the thing is when you see movies like this, you remember that so many cartoons are just blatant cash grabs. Yeah. Just, just a movie that is. I mean, this movie looked terrible. Terrible. And it's got a bunch of famous voices, and it's clearly spent. They spent a lot of money and took a lot of care, and they've done a lot of work to make it look visually appealing yeah. and interesting. Yeah. And it's DreamWorks SKG. These are the people who brought us Shrek, I believe. Um, Great. But that's a cash. But that's a cash grab thing too. I. I I completely the first agree Shrek, with you. The first Shrek wasn't, I don't think. I think the first Shrek was a legitimately interesting idea. I think the first Shrek was an, a legitimately interesting idea. I maintain that, I, and I know that I'm in the minority here. I just think that I, I found it much less successful than oh, most I didn't, other people. Oh, I didn't care to. for it. Right. Oh, I didn't care for right. it. I didn't see the other Shreks. I saw the first one and I was like, okay. Yeah. But to I be fair, I agree with you. It was not a cash grab. I agree and it was an interesting movies. idea, uh, but yes. it was a very typical movie. I don't know what to tell you about Pixar, except that their movies are not like normal movies. Yeah. They are not making movies in the same zone, area code, time zone, mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. as other cartoon makers are. And I don't, 
And that's that is how <clears throat> Pixar has picked up the torch for Disney. Yeah. Because there was a point when that was Disney, right? Disney cartoons meant my you know meant something specific. Agreed. Absolutely. And I think that's how Pixar has picked up the, the torch, and it makes perfect sense that Pixar was being run through Disney, and it makes perfect sense that John Lasseter is the one running Disney Animation Studios now, John Lasseter being the head of Pixar, because that actually, I mean, from a, from a, from a money standpoint, it's brilliant. But from a creative standpoint, it also makes sense. Yes. And I want to just say, like, I get that we talk about these movies a lot, but for me, a great cartoon is can be the best kind of movie there is because it's a movie where a child and an adult can both watch yes. at the exact same and a teenager and an old person and everybody can watch yes. it and get something and Completely different agree. things for different people. Completely you know? agree. And um, Turbo was just, it just made me feel like, like there's no difference between Turbo and Beverly Hills Chihuahua. No, none. Or none. Space Monkeys. It's literally just how do we get it, kids in? You know, it, it makes me feel dirty watching that trailer. It just, it, it, I, I right. feel unclean after watching. That's right. That trailer. That's right. Is that is that your one big thing? Is that your one big thing? It just, yeah. it just, it just hit me that yeah. I get that we talk about the Pixar stuff a lot, but I have to say, watching a trailer like that movie Turbo, it just reminded me there is cartoons just for the sake of being a family oriented yes. money money maker, yes. just yes. designed so that kids will go take me to see that. Yes. And then other people who are legitimately going, I love animation. How do I make a movie? In the How same, do I tell a freaking story? In the same way, in the same way that junk food is like, di like scientifically designed to, and yes. packaging yes. to, to like the first bite is incredible. Yep. Like the, the advertising for these movies is all that needs to be engaging and stimulating in any way except for the basest ways. You know, there was a book that came out a couple years ago, well, more now, like 10 years ago, called Fast Food Nation, mm -hmm. and it was just tearing up all, all the companies. Mm -hmm. And then it just stops in the middle of the book. It was like, there is this one California burger company called In-N-Out Burger that designed the bur drive through and um, actually, all of their food is fresh. All of their employees are well played. All they use is fresh ingredients that are never frozen, and no one's ever miserable there. And they were like, now, back to fast food, and it's terrible. Film. And like that's no, but I'm like, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like that's that's how I feel like about Pixar, where right. it's like, like when you just say cartoons, you're like, oh, it's all just designed to destroy you. And then they're like, eh, except this one company that actually cares about doing it right. That's all I wanted to it's say. Not, it's not that I mind you you pimping in and out, but could you wait to do that again until they're like paying us for like the endorsement? Eh? I. Eh? Is I go the other okay? way, where if I talk about In-N-Out Burger and Diet Coke long enough, eventually they'll You'll have, get it for free. They'll just have to pay <laughs> nice, me. Yeah, that's nice. the deal. Well, right? well played. Just anyway. Well played. So, so my my one big thing uh, is only tangentially related to movies, but I don't care because it's my podcast, and you know what? We can do what we want. Um, I saw. <laughs> I saw. Uh, nice. I like. I like where you were going with that. Uh, I saw Man of Steel. Um, with a with a very very good friend of mine, Damon, who has contributed many thoughtful questions to our mailbags. Thank you, Damon. Um, and the reason I saw it with him, as he is currently living in Princeton, New Jersey, is because he got married this past weekend, and it was absolutely incredible. Truly, one of my top ten weekends of all time. And and uh, and just and to, to tie it in more with movies, to give you to give you Second Breakfast Nation and. You fill an idea of how sort of inextricably linked movies are. Damon and I don't just sit around talking about movies, but he is the reason. He's not the reason I saw it for the first time. He is the reason I love Cool Hand Luke as much as I do. Wow. He is the reason I saw Stalag 17 for the first time. The Great Escape, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. These are all movies that... Okay. I love a great deal of my love for them is bound up in my love for this guy. And I have so, to tell you, I have yeah. to tell you, I'm loving him a little bit right now. You should. This is phenomenal taste. This guy has. He has. He has impeccable taste. It's true. Um, uh, I hope that extends to his taste in women. She is. She is marvelous. She's marvelous. Okay. Okay. Uh, she's. She's fantastic. And Maybe. I love. Yeah. And I love the fact that on his wedding weekend, y'all went to the movies. That oh, totally. is great. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Um, yes, yes. He's a wonderful guy. 
here's how wonderful he is. He totally upkicked his coverage. Katie's amazing. So you know what? Well done. Well yeah. done. Yeah. So there you go. Um, and that's my one big thing. So fantastic. Shall let's, we let's move on? Start the clock. Start El Clocko. All right. To remind everyone, from here on out, you'll see 4:50 on the uh, on the timer. There, uh, you will hear an old timey car horn noise. Phil, what does it sound like? Mahuga. Yes. That means we have roughly 10 seconds. Well, we have exactly 10 seconds to make five minutes, but we go roughly because we don't do anything in the time that we right. allot for ourselves. So, uh, Phil, you going? You ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. You ready? Okay. You ready? You uh, am I ready, though? Am I ready? Are you steady? Ready? Steady? I'm just looking at one thing here to decide if this counts. It does not count. All right, I'm ready. Okie dokie. Ready? Steady? Okay. Five minutes? Go. I saw very few movies this week. I saw four movies. Okay. Uh, and I saw a movie called Halloween, which we talked about last week. Yep. Um, I saw Paranorman, hmm. which I, I will come back to in a second. I saw Man of Steel, and I watched Finding Nemo with my daughter. Lovely. That's uh, lovely. And now two of those four movies are animated movies that made me think about the one my one big thing about Turbo. Sure. And what I want to say is the anti-version of this is this movie called Paranorman, which when it first came out, I had... Almost no interest in. Mm -hmm. It got crazy good reviews. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's interesting. It was, it's on Netflix streaming for free. And, well, I guess it's not free if it's streaming. It's Netflix, whatever. But it's on <laughs> Netflix. I say that because Amazon, there are things you can stream for free and things you can stream for three bucks. Right, but Netflix, all the Amazon streaming movies that are free are only free on Prime, though, right? Is that true? Probably. I get Prime, so I don't know. Fair. I don't. No, nope, I'm not willing. Totally I'll never go back. No, yeah, uh, I will never. Absolutely go back. not. Absolutely not. I, I will not. sell a kidney before I <laughs> before I get right. rid of my Amazon Prime. That's right. I will, I will probably. I'll say this. I'll probably get rid of HBO before I get rid of Amazon Prime. I I see nothing. And that's a tough thing for. Well, yeah, but no, you don't have a television and cable. So, okay. <clears throat> so, so, anyways, Paranorman is an absolutely creative, original voice. Also, don't show it to children. It's like an adult uh, cartoon. Sure. Not adult in the in the seedy way. Adult, like, it's just grown-ups. It's like yeah. teenagers. But Paranorman was, like, someone making animation for the sake of art and telling a story, and it's awesome. beautiful. And I recommend Paranorman to everybody all the time. Your turn. Okay. <coughs> we sound great. I know, I got right? sniffles and you've got the coughs. This is just an exciting uh. podcast. <coughs> You know it's a good weekend when this is what you sound like afterwards. That's okay. true, that's true. I saw the science fiction masterpiece, Battle Los Angeles. Oh, boy. Okay, so so here's the deal. I saw this in movie theaters with a friend of mine, Andrew, who is another uh, frequent contributor to the podcast. Uh, and this was kind of what I thought about it when I saw it, and I think it even more so now. The battle scenes are, frankly, kind of astonishingly well done. Like, okay. really well done. And okay. literally every single moment where the characters are not shooting at someone or having someone shoot at them or running away or running towards something is terrible. Wow. I mean, I mean, like... So not good. Like, like the room, terrible. <laughs> like, Manos Hands of Fate, terrible. Like... I'm surprised they they remembered to take the lens cap off of the camera. Terrible. And yet you watched it again. Because you know what? You know, especially on DVD, I didn't fast forward it, but I could have, and it would have been a lovely experience. Okay. Fair enough. So that's my first one. I watched, uh, I, I'm, I'm watching at least one movie a week uh, over the past few weeks because of uh, your mentioning it. And uh, <laughs> you and I talked about Kick-Ass recently, so I rewatched it. And, uh, and I really liked it. I, I don't, it's not a perfect movie by any means, but... I mean, I, I really like Aaron Johnson. I could watch Chloe Grace Moretz do literally anything. Literally anything. Uh, Mark Strong, I, I'm sure he's a wonderful guy, but he but if he never does anything but play villains for the rest of my life, I am totally okay with that. Yep, yep. And, uh, and yeah. Um, and Nicolas Cage. I love it when Nicolas Cage... Nick Cage's performance is just fantastic. Like, people don't give him the credit he deserves. It's His true. performance is fantastic in that movie. I love, I love when he finds a movie that he can really be his weird self in, and he, he did it here. Yep. So, uh, I, watched, uh, I watched Blade and Blade 2. I was feeling the need for a little good Wesley Snipes in my life. Spoiler, Electric Boogaloo? Spoiler, next week you're probably going to hear me say I watched Blade Trinity. Um, I have never seen Blade Trinity, but I think Blade not, 2 is better than Blade 1. I do too. Blade Trinity isn't any good. Um, but I'm a completist. 
And then the two new movies I saw this week, Man of Steel, like, uh, as you did, and This is the End, a, uh, a, an sure. apocalyptic comedy that I don't think is any good, and I laughed my butt off and cannot wait to see it again. So then it must have been good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, in, in the final no, analysis... No, no offense. In the final analysis, a comedy is good if it makes you laugh. True. But it's not a well-made movie, and it's kind of a mess, like, okay. structurally. And that's it. Okay. And we have less than 20 seconds left. So coming out this weekend, Monsters University. Speaking of Pixar. Monsters is that this weekend? That is this weekend, baby. Game on. Uh, also, uh, a movie that I know Phil is very excited to see, uh, World War Z. I'm sure we'll be talking about that next week. And in limited release, oh. I don't know if I'm getting it this weekend or not, The Bling Ring. Emma Watson continues to uh, uh, distance herself from Hermione admirably. Uh, that's what I got. That's what we got. Uh, Phil, anything else? Have a great week, people. Have See you soon. Have a great week, everybody. We're Second Breakfast. I'm Andy Roth, and that's Phil DeBall. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. The most important meal of the day. Second